welcome to another video. Today it is part one of the Necessary Clutch Wallet Sew Along and you're going to be learning how to make yourself one of these lovely things. This is a pattern by Emmeline Bags and the lovely Janelle has created a genius thing here. It is a wallet and if you add a little wrist strap can even be a clutch bag because you can fit everything in here. There's room for cash, cards, makeup, stuff. You can even fit iPhone 6 in the middle, coins, more cards, and I put my receipts in this bit. And if you close it up, you then have a lovely purse or wallet depending on how much stuff you carry around and if you're anything like me it's everything so I've split this so so along up into five parts and this is part one and today we're going to be assembling and tracing our patterns making a few alterations and cutting out all of the fabrics and I've done this for a directional print like this one and a non-directional print like this one let's get started okay so you're going to need your pattern you're going to need your main fabric you're going to need your interior fabric for the way i do it you're going to need two at least eight inch zippers with nylon teeth you're going to need your closure which i've got a turn lock and i will also be showing you how to install a magnetic clasp as well if you want to add a wrist strap you are going to need a swivel clasp and two d-rings and if you want to add a shoulder strap, you need to add two more swivel clasps to that. Matching thread, marking tool of your choice, pencil, scissors. You're going to need firm interfacing. This is a really stiff one, as you can see. Medium weight interfacing. There's a Visline for the UK, Pellon for, the, for America. Um, there are other options available. These are just generic ones that I got from my local fabric store. Tape measure, you're going to need a ruler and you want a ruler that has a 60 degree angle marked onto it. If you haven't got a ruler with that on it, don't worry, you can always use a protractor. Pencil sharpener always comes in handy. Paper scissors, tape and you're going to want to have some kind of way of t attaching all of your fabrics together you want you want pins but you're also going to want something like these uh, clover wonder clips these are amazing for bag making because they allow you to put lots of thick layers together without distorting them so highly recommend you get yourself some of these these are optional but they do give you a really nice professional finish they're double cap rivets i have um a large rivet press which I can use with these which I will link mine down below it was uh, 56 pounds from eBay uh, there are other options for if you wanted to use these and I will try and list some of those options down below for you as well you don't need these but they are a nice addition so the very first thing you're going to want to do is cut out and assemble your pattern pieces. So I'm going to get everything cut out and then stuck together. You want to make sure that you, when you print, that your test square measures 2.5 by 2.5 inches. When you print, you want to print uh, with the scaling at zero or 100% just to and double check by printing page 10 and checking the test squares. Okay, so um, as I've just said to mum, because she just started cutting this out for me, bless her, we're not going to be doing this decoration piece onto the flap. It can be nice on certain types of prints, but the prints that I'm using are all very large and all um, will this would detract from them. I also find that this adds a lot of bulk to the flap and can be quite difficult to manoeuvre under some domestic machines. So I'm going to leave this piece out. Having said that, you should have cut out your front flap and the D pieces, so D, D1 left, the main wallet piece and D2 right. We're now going to stick those together and you want to overlap the grey grey pieces, line everything up, obviously very difficult to do with your left hand, and stick that down. So you want to overlap the two grey pieces and it says tape D2 here, this is piece D2, line 
everything up. And tape it down. And then do the same for the other side. So you'll end up with the large body piece like that. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is find the center of this pattern piece. And this is where I'm deviating from the instructions. So you're going to want to find the center. I've just literally folded mine in half to make a crease line. And then I'm going to draw that line in in pencil. I am then going to trace out half of the pattern piece and then I'm going to add my own seam allowance to it. So I've drawn a line down the center of the pattern piece and I'm now going to trace, trace out half of this pattern piece. So that's the half of the body piece traced. I now need to add seam allowance to it. Um, I'm going to add half an inch. The pattern that we're working with, all of the seam allowances are a quarter of an inch. The reason I'm adding half an inch here is because of the, what we're going to do with this later. It will make your life very much easier with that slightly larger seam allowance. And we're just going to cut that out now. Okay, so this half of the uh, main wallet piece that we've just created is going to be the what you cut your lining fabric out of. So you want to make a note of that. So it's the NCW main wallet piece lining cut two. Now if you have a directional print you will also be using this for the main body piece as well. So again make a note of that. Directional prints exterior fabric cut two. And also just make a note of the seam allowance that you've added because it is going to differ from the rest of the pattern that, uh, that we're using. So just, just so you have a visual reminder that you have added an extra half inch there. So that's our first deviation that we've made. Now we're moving on to cutting out all of the remaining pieces of our wallets and there are a few deviations that I make to this as well. First thing that I wanted to point out is that all of the measurements that are given are width and then height. So again, if you have directional prints, you want to bear that in mind when you're cutting your pieces out. So width first, then the height. Um, and there is a cutting guide here with check boxes so that you can make sure that you have got everything crossed off and cut uh, as you cut it out. Okay, so first up we have the zipper pocket pieces. Now I have again deviated from the pattern and I'm going to include two zipper pockets rather than just one. So these rectangles here are for the pocket lining. So you're going to want to cut out four of those, not two of those. So the next alteration we're going to make is to the outer pockets. And it says here to cut two rectangles, eight inches wide by seven and a half inches high. What we're actually going to do is we're going to cut one rectangle eight inches wide by seven and a half inches high and then we're going to cut two eight inches wide by three and three quarter inches high or you can cut two of those and just chop one in half and the next change that we're going to make to the pattern is instead of four rectangles of one and a half by one we're going to cross that out and we're going to make eight of those because I like to put two zipper pockets in 
And the other thing that I'm going to say is, you j as long as they are bigger than this, they can be scrap pieces of fabric. Um, I find the exact measurements very difficult to work with because they're so fiddly. So I like to work with a larger piece, which I then trim down once I've attached it. That's my preference. So you want eight of those. So you may want to add on a wrist strap and a shoulder strap, which you can totally do. And to do that, you will need D-ring anchors. So for the wrist strap, you will need one piece three inches wide by 12 inches long. For the, a shoulder strap, you will need one piece three inches wide by 36 inches long. And for the D-ring anchors, you're gonna need one piece three inches wide by six inches long, which will then cut in half to create two D-ring anchors. The reason that they are three inches wide is because when you fold it in half and in half again, that will give you three quarters of an inch, which is the measurement of this flat piece in here. So if you're using a different size swivel clip, you will need to measure the inside of your swivel clip and times that by four and that will equal your width. You still want a piece 12 inches long and a piece six inches long. With the help of my beautiful assistant, I'm going to show you how I determined that 36 inches was the shoulder strap length. So you drape your tape measure over your shoulder and then decide what height you like. You would like your bag to sit. That's a fairly good height, isn't it, Mum? Yep. Uh, in fact. Yes. There we go. So you kind of give it a bit of a wiggle, work out where you'd like it and look, 36 inches. So that's where that measurement came from. And that is the use of your tape measure. Thank you. These bags are a great way of using up scraps. This is um, one of mum's dresses uh, that you saw in her lookbook. And uh, these are all the little off cuts from that. So they're now going to be the interior of the zipper pockets. So it's a great way of using up scraps. I have lots, I've made lots of purses that were once upon a time a dress. And this is going to be dad's hearing aid wallet. So it is going to be an NCW with just a few tweaks on it. But this is a really good way of showing you how to treat a directional print, which this most definitely is. So the first thing you want to do is work out what you would like to have on your bag flap. Now, when you're looking at it, the flap is going to be down this way. So we're going for this fish on the flap. So he's going to be cut out and he will be what is front and center on the bag and then this is where the half pattern piece that we created earlier comes into play and again you want to kind of work out where your center is your bags eight inches wide so I think we're going to have these two guys there so we're going to cut that out and then once we cut that out we're then going to work out where the back is uh, which I'm thinking over this piece of coral and cut that out as well so all of these pieces will then be the right way up once we've sewn them together. So when you come to use this pattern piece, this is the top and this piece here is going to be the very bottom. So you want, this is the way that you want to put your pattern piece on a directional print. So if I put it over the fish like that, they will come out the right way up. If I put it over the fish like that, they will come out upside down, which is not what we want. So that way. Okay, so we've got our outer flap cut out with a lovely front and center fish. So we now want to cut out the lining fabric, which is going to be this stuff for the flap because I think that looks nice. Now you need to remember, so when you're looking at the bag from the outside, that's how it's gonna look. And then you open it and then that's how it's gonna look. So you want to cut your lining fabric of a directional print that way up. And we are going for the little seahorses. We're gonna put those in there. Okay, so once you've cut out your flap and your main body pieces, so this is the outside flap, and then when we open that up, then our seahorses are the correct way up. And then this piece is going to be our main body. So we're gonna sew those two pieces together so that when you look at this side, which will be the back, that's the right way up. And then when you look at this side, which is going to be where the flap covers, that will be the right way up. Okay, this is what I'm using for my non-directional print, um, but as you can see, there is a very large print, so you're going to want to be strategic with where you place your pattern pieces. Now for the exterior, for this one, you can use your original pattern piece, and I'm gonna place mine 
right over the center of that design because I think that's going to look awesome. And then, again, with your flap, you want to remember that when you, your outer piece, you're going to be looking at it that way. So I think I'm going to go for that really large flower there. And I'm going to cut those pieces out. And then I will do the lining, which I will show you in a second. Okay, so here's the exterior of our um, non-directional fabric. So we have the exterior bag piece cut out in a hole. We have the lining for the bag piece cut out into two separate pieces, which we will stitch together. And then we have the pocket flap. Two pieces cut out for that. If you can possibly get yourself a cutting assistant, I highly recommend it. It's made the process very easy. I like it. Um, Mum is using her rotary cutter, her quilting rulers and her mat to um, cut hers out. I personally have used my marking pen and drawn on the shapes that I need to cut out and then use my scissors. But obviously you can use whichever method you prefer. Okay, from our non-directional fabric, you want to have cut out your exterior flap, your exterior body your interior flap and your interior body and your interior body is always going to be in two pieces regardless of if your fabric is directional or not. If you're adding a wrist strap you're going to need your two D-rings and this is the D-ring anchor piece and this is three inches wide by six inches long and you're going to need a swivel clasp and the uh, swivel clasp piece is going to be your uh, what attaches to your wrist strap and your wrist strap is three inches wide by 12 inches long. Next on the cutting list is the zipper pocket and we have cut four eight inch wide by four inch deep inner pocket pieces. We've cut one eight wide and seven and a half deep outer pocket piece. Then we've cut two eight inch wide by three and three quarter inch deep outer pocket pieces. You can cut two of these and then just cut one of those in half. We have our at least eight inch long zippers. And then I've got here, I've got four scraps that are at least an inch and a half wide, which we'll make the zipper tabs with. Finally, we have the card slot pockets. So we have two that are eight inches wide and 15 and a half inches deep. We have two of those. And then we have one piece, which is eight inches wide and eight and a half inches deep. The difference we have with our directional fabric is that our outer main bag part is cut into two pieces which we will seam together and make sure that your print is the right way up on both of them and then again with your pocket flap you want to make sure that your interior pocket is facing this way and your exterior pocket is facing this way. So it's taken us all afternoon, but we've got everything cut out. Mum has her bag cut out, but she's taken that into the sewing room. So we've got Dad's wallet here. We've got the, uh, which is the directional print. We've got the non-directional print one here. And then we had enough left of the pink fairy frost to cut out another directional uh, one out of the parrot fabric. And that's for me. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I've linked all of the details to all of the stuff that you could possibly need in the description bar down below. So please check that. If the answer's not there, just ask me in the comments and I will be happy to help. So if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.